Fear of noises in dogs. Well, first of all, let's examine what it actually is. When we talk about fears, we often confuse the words anxiety, fears, and phobias. And when we look at this picture, a lot of people in the audience will cringe because a lot of people are afraid of spiders. I'm sure some of you are. Some of you will be afraid of snakes. Some of you will be afraid of heights. I'm very afraid of heights, so just even looking at this picture makes me feel very concerned, especially with the big shark face looking up at me from the bottom. But part of that helps explain why we have to understand that fear of noises in dogs has the same emotional response in them as spiders and snakes and heights might have for us. This particular picture I put in a lot of my presentations because it actually makes me feel quite scared. Um, it makes, helps me understand how the dogs might feel. And if you look at this picture, there's a number of things that come to mind. And one of the things is that it's obviously very high up. So number one, you'll never find me going this high up. Number two, because it's a bicycle and it looks like it's gonna go very fast, you're not gonna find me going very fast because I don't like being out of control, you know, driving at fast speeds. But the main reason I won't be getting on this bike is I don't actually know how to ride a bicycle. So there's three reasons that looking at this photograph actually makes me feel very, very frightened. And I think it helps us have empathy for our patients if we understand what fear actually means. So first of all, let me just go through a bit of basic stuff that will hopefully help you understand why dogs might be afraid of noises. We're going to talk about the dog's senses very briefly. So they have sight, hearing, smell, taste and touch, just like we have. And if we look at them, yep, it, on the surface it looks like they might be the same, but the way that animals actually perceive the world is very, very different. So if we look at their sight, we know that dogs are very sensitive to moving objects. They have very poor close-up vision, so they can't actually see things very close to them. They have poor binocular vision, so where we see things with two eyes, they see more out of one eye and the other, and then put the picture together. Um, and they also see in colour, but not the same way as people do. They're more like red, green, colourblind people. So what that tells you is they're going to be very worried about sudden movements. And think about that when we've got noises, and I'll come and elaborate on that in a little while. The canine hearing sense is thought to be at least four times more acute than human. So they're going to perceive sounds that are of higher frequency and also sounds of ultrasound. And so, again, we're going to recognise that different noises can worry dogs. Their sense of smell is their predominant sense. It's thought to be at least a thousand times more acute than that of humans, but it might even be more than that. Sometimes it's just our machinery isn't good enough or our technology isn't good enough to see what dogs can actually detect. And therefore, different smells can worry dogs as well. Their sense of taste is dependent on how... Um, really, I guess, uh, depends on whether they're going to eat certain foods or not. And again, this is going to be important when we're talking about fear of noises. How they eat food, how palatable a food for them will be, first of all, its smell, then the texture, how it feels in their mouth, and then the taste. Okay? So when you think about it with dogs, sometimes you'll offer them a treat, they'll smell it, they'll put it in their mouth. If it doesn't have this texture that they're used to, if it doesn't feel right in their mouth, they're going to spit it out even though it tastes okay. And it's not dissimilar to us, I guess, in some ways. You know, you can smell an apple, it smells really crisp, it smells really nice. You bite into it and it's got that flowery texture. You don't even know what it tastes like because the texture is wrong. Dogs, we cough and call them lazy eaters. They like soft foods, but not sticky foods. And generally dogs eat during the day about three times. So recently when my dog was unwell, I discovered that she actually got up for midnight snacks. So dogs don't always follow the textbooks that we write. But why that's important is different tastes can worry dogs. Their sense of touch is well developed and they do feel pain. So different sensations can worry dogs. So all of these things are important when we're dealing with dogs and their behavior, but it's even much more relevant when we're dealing with dogs with noise um, sensitivities or anxiety about noises. So let's talk about fear specifically. Fear is related to the specific behaviors of escape and avoidance. Anxiety is the result of threats that are perceived to be uncontrollable or unavoidable. 
often people use the terms interchangeably as fear and anxiety the same thing. They're similar but different. So one's about the immediate, one's about predicting the future. Both fear and anxiety may be adaptive in certain circumstances, but when we put the word phobia in there, if we're going to talk about noise phobias, phobias are always maladaptive. There is absolutely no evolutionary benefit to having a phobia. So let's go back to fear. Experiencing fear is a survival mechanism. That's one of the reasons that most of us don't go bungee jumping or abseiling or base jumping because it's part of keeping us alive. Um, it's an adaptive response and it usually occurs in response to a specific stimulus. So if you think about that picture of the bike at the top of the hill, um, every time I look at that photograph, and I've seen it lots of times, it still makes me come out in goosebumps because I have that emotional response to potentially this is going to not help me survive. The physiological signs of fear usually include things like increased heart rate, increased respiration rate, sweating, trembling, pacing, and often urination and defecation. So when you have an animal that's afraid of whatever it's afraid of, these are the different signs that you might see. The behavioural signs of fear, usually we look at changes in body posture, changes in activity level, we see avoidance behaviours because animals obviously don't want to go what, close to what they're fearful of. Me and heights, I don't go to the end of a cliff because I don't feel comfortable there. The emotional signs of fear are what we call the four Fs. Flight response, fight response, which most people are familiar with. Then we have the freeze response and then we have the fiddle or fidget response. Now freezing is something we see in animals a lot when they get frightened. Um, I guess the most common place you'd see it is in a veterinary hospital. People bring their dog in and they put the dog and the vet puts the dog on the table to examine it and everyone says, wow, what a well-behaved dog. He just sat there. But in fact, he's frozen. He's very, very, very worried about um, what might be going to happen to him. So when we look at these animals and we think, aren't they well-behaved, they're actually frozen solid. The fidget or fiddle behaviours are better called displacement behaviours but that starts with a D and it doesn't fit with my four Fs. So I like things to make simple and easy for people to understand. And displacement behaviours are actually normal behaviours, but they're out of context. Okay? So we see things um, like yawning, lip licking, grooming, sniffing, and sometimes even sleeping. And what they indicate is the animal's in internal conflict or internal stress. They're worried about something, they don't want to fight, they can't run away, but they're concerned about it. And in people, we do things like, you know, play with our hair or fiddle with a pen or jiggle with things. And they're all displacement behaviours that tell us that we're a little bit concerned about what's going on. And here's some photographs um, of a dog yawning and the lip licking we're talking about. And these are perfectly normal behaviours in the right context. If the dog wakes up, my dogs get up, they yawn, they stretch. It's not a conflict or displacement behaviour. If they lick their lips after they've eaten or drunk, it's a perfectly normal behaviour. But if they just walk down a corridor somewhere or I take them out for a walk and they start yawning and lip licking, it's out of context. It's not the behaviour we expect to see. So normal fear is adaptive. It's important for survival. Anxiety, on the other hand, is a more chronic state of non-specific apprehension. It means you're worried about something that potentially is going to injure you in the future. Anxiety, in some circumstances, can also be adaptive, especially if there's a specific threat. We should be worried about some things in certain circumstances. But anxiety can also be abnormal. And chronic anxiety, when animals are constantly worried or people are constantly worried, we get sympathetic arousal. And what we see is signs of hypervigilance. So we see these animals that are scanning, looking, checking, watching what's going on. We see autonomic hyperactivity. So we see gastrointestinal upsets, so vomiting, diarrhea, things that we might think is a physical sign, but it's actually a physiological response to stress. And we often see increased motor activity, pacing, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, because they're uncertain and worried about what might be going to happen. Now, let me take a little bit of time just to talk to you about panic attacks, because they're one thing, again, 
different from anxiety, fears and phobias. And panic attacks are not experienced by every animal that suffers from anxiety, but they're relatively common. And this might be the thing that you're going to notice most if you have an animal with a noise, um, fear or anxiety. They're relatively common and generally panic attacks come on without warning. And the fear is generally irrational and, the, um, and it's out of proportion to what the danger or perceived threat might be. However, from the animal's perspective, it's a real danger. It's, you know, they say perception is reality. These animals truly feel very, very threatened. And if anybody's ever had a panic attack, they know what I'm talking about, because people who've had panic attacks tell me that they feel like they're going to die. They can't breathe, they're really stressed, and they honestly think they're going to die. And this is why it's really important that if we have an animal that has a fear of noises and it has a panic attack, it's a very stressful, very, very distressing thing for the animal to experience. A phobia is defined as an irrational, intense, persistent fear of certain situations, activities, things or people. The fear or panic response is out of proportion to the stimulus and a phobia is always maladaptive. As I said before, um, if there's no evolutionary benefit to have uh, a phobia about anything. And people and animals have different types of phobias. But what's important to remember is that animals don't habituate, don't get used to whatever it is um, that they're worried about, even after very many harmless contacts. So if you have a phobia about things, it doesn't matter how often you see that spider, that snake, you're not gonna get used to it just by looking at it. And what happens over time, it doesn't decrease. People think that if they get exposed to these things very gradually, um, very slowly, that that um, phobic uh, panic attack will decrease, but it does not. And that's why we have to use other ways to help these animals if they have a noise phobia. Phobias, in fact, are the most common form of anxiety disorder in people. And a study by the National Institute of Mental Health in America found that between 8.7% and 18% of Americans suffer from phobias. That's almost one in five people in America are going to have a phobia of some description. And phobias can range from fear of noises, but they can be phobias about snakes or spiders. But sometimes we see that they can also be worried about, I have a, um, a client was telling me the other day that she had a phobia about bananas. And people might laugh about that because it seems like everyday common um, um, fruit that we see all the time, but there's no explanation for a phobia. It's not something you have to have a bad experience with, there's no explanation for it, but it can really make that person's life, and it certainly did in this person's life, make life very, very difficult. So phobias in dogs, the most common ones we see are noises and places. So noises um, are very, very common. Um, but also we can have animals that are phobic about veterinary hospitals or certain um, places that they've been to that they may have a panic attack. The most commonly reported noises that are problematic for dogs are fireworks and thunderstorms. And phobic responses have physiological, behavioural and emotional responses similar to fear, but they're extremely exaggerated. So they're out of proportion to what we would normally expect to be a non-threatening stimulus. So fear of noises, the clinical signs we see in dogs are hyperventilation, so their respiration rate goes up. We see them pacing and hiding. We see destructive behaviours. We see escape attempts and we see salivation. And what you can see here is a photograph of one of my clients. Um, the dog looks like it's been for a swim. It hasn't. What you're seeing on this dog is actually saliva. It is absolutely coated in saliva. And that dog has had... Um, a panic attack during exposure to a thunderstorm. Interestingly enough, a lot of people are going to miss that fact because the saliva will dry, so that by the time they come home, there's nothing to see. Whereas if your dog has destroyed the place when you've been out, there's much more uh, evidence that the dog is actually worried about things. Clinical signs occur in the presence of the fear-provoking stimulus, such as thunderstorms or fireworks. Um, quite commonly, it's associated with separation anxiety. And there may or may not be an underlying traumatic event. 
I have a number of patients um, where there was a traumatic event. I had one dog that was involved in um, an earthquake and while he was in the house, the house fell on top of him. So he has absolutely good reason to be worried about noises. Another dog was out and there was a big thunderstorm came through and a tree branch fell on his kennel. And so again, he's got a really good reason to be worried about things. But most times when we're worried about things, there is no underlying traumatic event. I'm scared of heights, but there's really been no um, traumatic event. I haven't fallen off a cliff face, I haven't fallen out of a tree. Nothing in my um, early childhood would suggest that that's the reason for my fear of heights. And I like to think I'm just being sensible by not going bungee jumping or base jumping. But with animals, sometimes we find there is a traumatic event, but most often there's not. The fear of noises, the most common ones we see are fireworks and thunderstorm. I, thunderstorms, I actually have a dog that was very fear, fearful of fireworks and thunderstorms, um, and she now uh, is not so much worried about that because we've treated her with that. There's also dogs who are worried about gunshots, cars backfiring, and what happens over time is that these noises that we think you know, are very loud and obvious that are gonna be worrying animals, um, but I've had two dogs that are really worried about things like sausages sizzling on the barbecue because what's happened, they've generalized. So it started with fireworks being bad, thunderstorms being bad, cars backfiring, and even the noise of the sausages going on the barbecue is enough to make them run away. And to me, that's a real sad thing when you see dogs who can't even hang around for food. And this is why when we were talking earlier about their senses, um, these things can have a profound effect because obviously now initially it's the noise of the sausages. After a while, it'll become the smell of the sausages that will make the dogs feel fearful of things. And we know that fear of noises is, re is reported more in dogs than it's reported in cats. When it's out of context and occurs at a constant and elevated level or interferes with normal functioning, then it becomes really problematic for the animal. But other times I think even though uh, it may not be uh, constant, it, the animal is still worried about lots of things that are going on and we still need to think about recognising this in animals and trying to help them cope with, what, with that, with I guess the world that they live in if the truth be known. So there's another close-up photo of the dog that was salivating and you can see on the ground around the dog there's all spots of water but it's actually um, the, the saliva that stripped off this dog. So in conclusion, fear of noises is common. It can be managed to improve the quality of life of the dog and the owner and it's really important that we remember the dog's senses. When we start off with uh, noise um, sensitivity or fear of noises, we often think it is just the noise. But with thunderstorms, um, there's often changes in ozone layers, there's changes um, in um, the colour of the sky, there's changes in the weather in general. So a lot of these dogs pick up on other, other things than just the noise of the fireworks or the thunderstorms. And they start to predict this is going to happen. And so we have to think of their sense of smell because they can predict changes in atmospheric pressure. Often when there's thunderstorms or fireworks, there's a different smell in the air. We have to think about their hearing, which is more acute than ours. We have to think of their sight because most thunderstorms come with lightning. And so there's a visual impact on it as well. And we have to think about touch because a lot of these dogs, when they're worried, um, want to be near people or away from people. And we have to also consider taste because, as I said, we have these dogs that are worried about thunderstorms. Then it becomes a concern about the um, sausages. And so some of these dogs won't actually eat the food that they can smell, that they associate with having uh, a... Um, a panic attack or a phobic attack or fear of noises.